It is late Sunday evening on this June 2nd, 2013, and this is your latest 28storms.com tropical weather update. As we begin with the latest tropical weather outlook from the Hurricane Center, they are monitoring a tropical wave moving out of the Northwest Caribbean and into the Southeast Gulf of Mexico, and they give this feature a 10% chance of development into a tropical depression or storm within the next 48 hours. Today's daytime visible satellite animation shows that we do have a very broad area of cyclonic spin along the eastern half of the Yucatan Peninsula, and as we turn on the enhanced infrared, we can see that there is a lot of convection near the Yucatan, although part of this is activity that is fairly normal for the mid-afternoon and late afternoon hours of the summer. You get a lot of daytime heating, and that allows the summer storms to really flare up, but overall this is still a very disorganized mass of convection, and as we turn on the water vapor image, you can see that conditions are still not very favorable for any kind of organized tropical cyclone development. We have a lot of westerly winds in excess of 30 to 40 knots streaking across the Gulf of Mexico, not to mention we have a lot of dry air that is also across much of the central and northern Gulf. Therefore, it is highly unlikely that we see much of any tropical development for at least the next two to three days. The latest 18Z run of the American GFS model maintains a lot of troughing out across the central and eastern United States over the next five days, and that is going to allow for an alleyway to develop over much of the southeast Gulf of Mexico and the Florida Peninsula, so anything that does form out across the southern Gulf is going to move northeast towards the Sunshine State. You can also see that we do have Atlantic subtropical ridging over the Bahamas and far central and eastern Caribbean, so this is going to help also direct any system directly over Florida. One bit of good news, however, is that most models, including the GFS, is maintaining strong vertical wind shear over the Gulf. Therefore, we still see nothing more than a very broad area of low pressure moving over Florida and then up the southeast United States. This is looking to be primarily a heavy rainfall maker. We could be looking at as many as 5 to 10 inches of rainfall, and that is exactly what the GFS is showing here for much of the area over the next 5 to 7 days. NOAA's Weather Prediction Center is also monitoring all of the forecast models, and they have come up with this precipitation forecast. You can see that the bullseye is currently set for extreme lower Florida down into the Florida Keys. You're looking at around 8 to 9 inches here with locally higher amounts. As a result, the National Weather Service offices located within Florida are also closely monitoring the flood situation, and it's almost a guarantee that they will have to issue flash flood watches during the early to mid part of this upcoming week. Finally, as we take a quick look at the 12Z run of the ECMWF model, as we fast forward into the next 24 hours, we can see that a very broad area of low pressure starts to become more prominent near the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. And as we work our way into Tuesday and Wednesday morning, we do have a very broad 1,007 millibar surface low located well to the south of New Orleans. And as we go into Thursday and Friday, we see the reinforcement of the troughing becoming more established here over the southeast United States and that will help to guide the surface low across Florida, more so probably across Tampa and Orlando, and then this low will start to acquire more in the way of non-tropical characteristics as it intensifies and works its way up the southeast United States coastline. So we're still not too terribly concerned about the threat of full-blown tropical development, although at a worst case scenario we would likely be talking about a tropical depression or a very weak named storm. Nonetheless, we're still going to be talking about a lot of rainfall and flooding for Florida, and that is going to be the main risk as we go into next week. So please continue to follow the National Weather Service along with updates here at 28storms.com for more information.